Okay, I'm not gonna lie, the title says unboxing, but I jumped the gun here guys because I couldn't help myself and also because this thing is really cool. So this is technically an unboxed video. Same difference in my opinion. But anyway, this is the Solis 5G hotspot. It's a portable Wi-Fi 6 hotspot hub that leverages pretty much any available data network out there locally or globally so you'll always be able to stay connected wherever you are especially for traveling or if you're you know somewhere new anyways let's do this for those of you who are new to the Solis brand, they've been around for a number of years now producing a couple or three different uh, Wi-Fi hotspots for travelers, globe trackers and such. Uh, and they've always stopped short at 4G and I'm so glad they finally have a 5G model for those who require a higher data throughput. So this is the packaging right here. Remember this is unboxed. I opened it and already connected and just tested it a little bit, just played around with it a little bit. Uh, but for the most part, I'm pretty fresh on this. So we'll go through this together on the box here. It says it will automatically connect to the fastest network. And here, um, this is one of the big ones is available in 135 plus countries, no SIM card required. We'll talk more about the plans later on too, as best as, as I can understand it. Um, but inside, as you can see, this is very different from their 4G model. model. It was a puck, bright orange puck, really cool. I think it had a speaker for phone calls, but this just is plain gen. It looks more like an old school MP3 player or a, an old phone, right? So on the inside, you have uh, the hotspot itself. It is robust, as you can tell. And on the inside, we have, uh, you know, operation manual and also a charging cable, USB-A to USB-C and also a SIM card remover. Yes, this thing has a SIM card slot in case you want to use your own SIM card, uh, you can do so right there. Um, come on, focus. Uh, you can do it, little Panasonic. And right here is the power button and when you hold it down, it will power it on. And I already have it on and it's a touch screen, by the way, guys. It's an LCD unit, I think. It maxes out around 200 nits maybe at most it's not very bright and it goes out it times out really fast and there's no way to like you know you have to tap the power button each time but anyways at the top right here there's a lanyard loop it doesn't come with a lanyard but you can install one and just hang it outside your backpack and i think that's the best way because people can just turn this on and use this throw this in your luggage or your backpack and be fine with it but if you want the least interference you can just hang it outside your luggage or your bag uh, for the best reception. You know what else this thing reminds me of? One of those external hard drive enclosures from Toshiba, one of those tough ones that you can, it'll survive a nuclear holocaust kind of thing. And speaking of tough, supposedly this has a drop resistance of 122 centimeters. So if you drop this anywhere, it will survive, they say, because of these bumpers. But I think if you drop it on its screen side, yeah, it's either at least gonna scratch up or something worse is gonna happen. Because look at it, the bumper doesn't extend past uh, the front of the fascia itself. So, you know, take it for what it is. It has IP54 water dust resistance for what it's worth. Um, $400, by the way, price of entry, this thing. I'm not sure about other countries, but if you buy this in the US, they give you a 15 gig uh, data to use, but it's kind of misleading on a website. It makes it sound like it doesn't expire, but this is more of a, uh, a three month program. So once you register, register this uh, system and then you sign in to the account to claim the 15 gigabyte data, it only will last 90 days. So yeah, I was kind of hoping it would be just, you know, a flat, forever kind of thing just for fun you know you pay so much at least throw that in right in here there's eight antennas and there's also an internal battery of 6500 milliamp hours so this thing also serves as a power bank but i wouldn't recommend it uh, but just in case you're traveling and need come on focus little panasonic it doesn't want to focus right now in case you need to juice up your uh, device or something you can plug it in and it works uh, in terms of charging i did this thing came in like 50 or 60 percent battery so i quickly plugged it into uh, the usb port at the bottom here to charge and according to my estimates within 10 minutes it only got up to seven percent so it is kind of a slow charger there's no fast charging from what i can see so that's a little bit unfortunate plan ahead of time if you're planning to go from zero to a hundred percent uh, so part of the eight antenna system, um, and besides that, there is also Wi-Fi 6 MIMO, uh, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz uh, connectability, uh, connectivity, uh, and you can connect up to 16 devices together, which is pretty nice. 
When the hotspot is fully off, to power it on, you just hold down the power button just like you would with a phone. But once it's already booted up, you just tap it and it comes right on. And you can see right here, the viewing angles of the display. Yeah. <laughs> and it times out really fast too. And there's no way to change that in the settings. That's one of the few requests I wish this would have was a, you know, a customizable timeout uh, timer for that one. So, and then you swipe, it's not the best swiping action. You kind of do kind of intentionally and slowly. And here you can see uh, four different quadrants right here. Here you can manage your data plan and always will tell you to go to this website, which is the CMO site where it, it's a data provider that you can, or data service site where you can buy data plans uh, for the US. And we'll talk about that in a second, uh, how much those things cost and what, what that entails. Here you can see uh, your Wi-Fi information and how the you know, passwords and all that kind of such. And this is the signal scan. This thing actually does uh, try to find the best signal automatically. But if you want to force it, there's this thing called signal scan. You press start and it will try to find, like in this case, I'm T-Mobile. And if it's weak, uh, it will say, look for AT&T or Verizon or whatever network is available and try to hang on to that as best as, can, as it can. And then once you back here, you go to the menu, you can see your Wi-Fi settings. You can do dual band or single band right here. You can just want to stick it to 2.4 or five. Uh, you can do that as well. And then you can see here what uh, devices are connected. Once I connect one of my, my devices later, I'll show you this screen again. Uh, it will pop up right here. And you can also, once it's connected, you can also try to, uh, you can force each de uh, device away too. You can say, I wanna cancel the connection because I don't think this device is legit. I'm gonna push you out. Anyways, uh, here is the brightness control and we got 50%. There is not much difference at 100. I, that's why I think this is like 200, maybe 250 nits at best. And here you can see what data usages you have for your virtual SIM. Uh, and also when it started and things like that. So managing your account, basically. Uh, here you can see if there's a SIM card inserted, uh, it will also tell you what it is. And then a CMO service, it, again, it will tell you to go to the CMO website. And then settings, here you can change the language and also what SIM type. So you can have the SIM card or the virtual SIM. Here's a quick demo of what it looks like to have a device connected to the Solis hotspot. So I already have on this uh, OnePlus, I already have the 5G network punched in, the password's already in there. Um, I also have a separate 2.4, but all I have to do is just press connect and right here, it will connect to that network. And basically it's now, let's see, what are you using? You're running off a T-Mobile T -Mobile 5G network. And so when you go back in here to settings, uh, you will see connected device and you can see my OnePlus Nord N30 5G is connected. So there you go. And you can see it's running now. It's just switched to 4G. So here's the thing about a quick word about networks. So this thing touts itself as able to connect to any network, but I think that really depends on where you are. So where I am right now, as you can see from the bars and also where how it's wavering between just T-Mobile 5G, 4G, and you don't see any other network, unless I push a signal scan and force it, you will find AT&T maybe at best. Uh, where I, I live, it's kind of in a dead zone. It's really kind of like in between where all the uh, the towers are. So I don't get the best signal, but if you're closer or live in an area or are in an area, and I've seen stories where, where people who own this, they're in the middle of like Iceland or something and some of those tourist sites by the fjords and the glaciers, they have full bars because you know they have networks out there for the tourists. So if you're in a place like a city or anything like that, and if you're traveling, and this is one of the cool parts about this device and really the purpose, if you're wondering, well, who's this for? It's for people who travel, who don't need a, pl a phone plan to make calls and just need to pre-purchase data, data and you can communicate with your friends to what uh, to like Skype or something, this will totally work. And so I'll show, show you on the screen in a second what it looks like uh, to buy the plans. Uh, they are they range from like uh, day passes all the way up to 50 gig plans, depending on, you know, if you're talking about US or internationally or selected, they have this new thing. I think it's new. It looks new from when I first looked at it is uh, most popular countries. So that's not bad, not bad of a deal for people who like frequently go to these places. Um, the plans are pretty cheap for what they are, especially when you compare it to like, say, when you start traveling and look at data plans and phone plans over there, 
yeah, it can get quite up there. And these, you can just pre-buy it and just be ready to go. And once you start traveling, this will automatically connect. No issues, no red tape, no red tape, no SIM card to buy. Uh, and it will connect to the quickest network. So you know who else this might be awesome for? RVers and van life campers. You just have to, you know, stick this on your console, your glove box or whatever. You can work from your car, cross borders without having to worry about swapping out SIM cards. I mean, if you already have a SIM card, you can just stick it in here and be done with it. But as long as you have a nice strong signal coverage, this thing will seamlessly go between borders and you don't have to worry crossing Canada or Mexico. Yeah pretty darn awesome right and this is not like agnostic to uh, specific networks like say if you're in verizon on in the us and you cross into canada uh, you are using their partner right but in this case this will get just the strongest network for you which is pretty darn uh, handy great for like navigation and working and all those kind of things even uh, video chatting and all that now one thing during my research of this and i tried digging into this a little bit more let me split the screen and pull up this thing called the Acer Enduro Connect M3. And the Acer is sold in, I think, Europe and some other countries. But guys, tell me if these two are not like identical. I think this is just a rebadged Acer or maybe this it's the other way around. If someone knows better, let me know down in the comments because these two have identical features like the signal scan function, both have them. If you want to buy plans on either one, you go to the SEMO website. Again, the same uh, loop right here. It's crazy. And I tried uh, removing the screws a second ago to get the bumper off to see if I can pull the uh, back cover off uh, to see if the SOC and whatever componentry are identical to the Acer. Uh, but no dice, this thing is pretty strong. So at least we know that this is pretty tough for what it is. But if anybody knows better, please help me in the comments to figure this out. That'll be super nice uh, to know for sure. So overall, the Solis 5G hotspot is actually pretty fantastic. It works really well. It's a great concept. Although there are a couple of areas I really want to see improvements in in the next version. Fast charging. This thing is anemic getting from zero to 100. The LCD display is not a huge downer for me, but it is the time right there. The timeout is just too fast. Um, and the other thing is the price. $400 is way too much. I think $300 would have been a sweet spot, especially once you start pairing this with the plans, they do rack up, right? And I'm also glad that the plans are not atrocious for something so niche like this. The plans, when you compare it to say uh, AT&T and Verizon and all of them, uh, the roaming data plans alone, they cost about the same. It's very nice for the, very good for the convenience. So. There you have it, guys. Thank you for watching. I'm really grateful that you guys check this out. And please uh, show your support. Subscribe to this channel. Thumbs up if you like this video. And remember to do something loving and kind for somebody in this world because I just dropped, almost dropped it right there. And do something loving and kind for somebody in this world because guess what? The world needs it more than ever. And it starts with you. I love you guys very much. Peace out and God bless.